In the ultra competitive world of tea industry, with brands like Brook Bond and Tata Tea in the fray, there is a brand that has stood strong with the test of time. Wag Bakri. This name is known not only for good tea, but also for something special about the way it's seen. Have you ever wondered why this name was chosen and how it remains so popular? Let's dive in and explore the interesting tale of Wag Bakri, a name that's more than just tea. The enduring legacy of Wag Bakri finds its roots in a historical journey that spans over a century. Founded in 1892 by entrepreneur Narayan Das Desai, who had garnered substantial experience in the tea industry while managing a tea garden in South Africa, the brand's trajectory commenced with his return to India. Desai's vision materialized into the establishment of the Gujarat Tea Depot Company, a predecessor to the iconic Vag Bakri brand. It was in 1934 that the distinctive name Vag Bakri was bestowed upon the brand, marking a pivotal moment in its evolution. Prior to this rechristening, the brand operated under the banner of Gujarat Tea Depot Company. The subsequent rebranding of the company as Gujarat Tea Processors and Packers Limited signaled its transformation into a more comprehensive entity poised to encompass the facets of tea processing and packaging. The nascent phase of this brand's journey witnessed its sales primarily concentrated within the confines of Gujarat. However, by mid-1990s, a significant expansion was orchestrated, leading to the introduction of the Vag Bakri tea brand in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and other states across India. This strategic expansion not only broadened the brand's geographical footprint, but also facilitated its transition from a regional gym to a nationwide favourite. Vag Bakri's name has a very cool story. Imagine a tiger, that's Vag in Gujarati, and a goat, that's Bakri, drinking tea together from the same cup. It's like rich and poor, high and low, all sharing a moment over the tea. This teaches us that tea brings everyone together, no matter where they come from. Between 2007 and 2009, Vag Bakri tea reached more places. It started being sold in Maharashtra, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, and even the national capital region of India. This was a big step in its journey. At first, they only sold tea in Gujarat. But in the 1990s, they went bigger, bringing Vag Bakri to Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and other states. There's a good reason for the same. Vag Bakri is present only in 13 states, largely in central and western parts of the country, as well as a couple of northern and southern states. Parad Desai, executive director of Gujarat Tea Processors and Packers Limited, explains, We look at a state as a country. We spent a good 10 years in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh before even thinking of getting into Maharashtra. We spent 5 years in Maharashtra before launching in Delhi. The reason for this approach is the company's priority to developing a robust distribution network. Every year at our board meeting, we see how many retail outlets and distributors we are going to add, says Parag. The idea is to increase the number of sellers. And that is the way we grow our sales, adds Rasesh. Citing the example of Gujarat, where the company has a market share of more than 60%. So, Vag Bakri isn't just your everyday tea brand. It's a story of how a simple name and a cup of tea can bring people together and how a small company can grow into something well known all over India. Vag Bakri's journey transcends the ordinary world of tea. It's a brand that's all about going the extra mile. They didn't settle for just selling tea in bags, they aimed higher creating unique spaces like Wag Bakri Tea Lounges, first in Mumbai and subsequently in Delhi. These lounges are more than just spots to sip tea. They are places where you can explore a wide range of tea flavours and munch on tasty snacks. In the vast landscape of the tea industry, Wag Bakri has truly made a mark for itself. Imagine this, people in India spending a hopping 10,000 crores and more on packaged tea. Among the giants, two major players Tata Global Beverages and Hindustan Unilever held the position steady, each with around 29% and 27% market share respectively from 2012 to 2016. Here's where Vag Bakri stands out. While others stayed pretty much where they were, Vag Bakri's market share actually grew from roughly 7% to about 8% during that same period. This approach, coupled with their unwavering dedication to making top-notch tea, has propelled Vag Bakri to a remarkable position. By the year 2016 to 2017, they had achieved an impressive annual sales turnover of Rs 1100 crore with a staggering tea volume of 42 million kilograms. Wag Bakri has had a compound annual growth rate of 10 to 12% in volume over the last decade. 
In the premium segment, Wag Bakri's Good Morning competes with HUL's Yellow Label and Taj Mahal, while Wag Bakri's Mili is positioned against HUL's Red Label in the popular segment. But there's more to Wag Bakri's success story than just numbers. It's a story of humble beginnings and a commitment to quality. They started small, yet they never compromised on the quality of their team. What sets them apart is the unique approach. Instead of just keeping all the profits to themselves, they decided to give back to the people who enjoy their tea. So, Vag Bakri isn't just any tea company. They're different and they've shown that by thinking smart and caring about their tea and their customers, even a small beginning can turn into something really big. The narrative of Vag Bakri's growth exemplifies the convergence of entrepreneurial spirit, astute branding decisions, and a commitment to quality. With roots dating back to Narayan Das Desai's experiences in the tea gardens of South Africa, Vag Bakri's journey transformed a simple enterprise into a name that resonates with tea enthusiasts across India. From its humble origins in Gujarat to its widespread recognition today, the legacy of Vag Bakri stands as a testament to the enduring appeal of tradition-infused innovation.